This is the Rocket Cone XP Air. With an ergonomic feature field design, it's going up against some of the most popular mice in gaming, the Logitech G502 and the Razer Basilisk. This category of mice focuses on including lots of features such as unlockable tilt shift scroll wheels, thumb buttons, 10 plus programmable buttons, DPI shifts, docks, wireless charging technology and more. And the Cone XP Air attempts to top the charts in terms of the quantity of features, but how does it compare against the juggernauts of the G502 and the Basilisk? Is it comfortable to use for prolonged periods? And do the features have a practical use, or will I kill over suffering from some sort of feature overdose? The Cone series has been around for a long, long time, since 2012 at least, so it actually predates the G502. You get some curvatures on the left side for a nice little thumb rest slash hole, which is the long standard shape feature of the Cone series. This does mean that the mouse is mainly designed to be used with a palm grip to really make use of the size of this mouse and the thumb crevice. If you're someone that prefers to hold their mouse in a different way then you won't be missing out terribly. But these designs are for those who allow a mouse to fill their whole hand with a gentle squeeze. With its 99 gram weight it actually puts it at the same weight as the Logitech G502X Lightspeed which is the lightest of the new G502 wireless models. It's not awfully heavy but it might be the limit for some though for some some reason there's always someone in the comments that makes a point about how weak someone must be if they don't like the 100 gram mouse. I mean I know you're going to write the comments so you might as well just post it. You may notice that there's a button here as well, I think this is a good implementation of an extra side button as just moving my thumb down slightly easily triggers it. Maybe not worth having something incredibly important bound to it but it is handy, I had it set to ping an enemy in Apex and it seemed to work okay. The coating is also similar to the Rocket Cone Pro Air, I'll give you my thoughts on this a bit later but you get a soft matte coating which comes in both black and white. Rocket do enjoy this translucent covering which features in a lot of their mice. There's also a few lines on both the sides of the mouse to hopefully provide extra grip. Moving on to the buttons and switches, you're getting the Titan Optical Switch which has featured in a number of Rocket mice these days. They're designed to be usable for 100 million clicks and as they're optical they should be very consistent. What are my thoughts on these? Patience, I am building up to it. You get extra side buttons, in fact double the amount than usual, as well as some DPI cycle buttons next to the mouse one, similar to those that feature on the G502. Now these don't take up as much space as the ones on the G502 and not only that they can be triggered just by moving them to the sides so there's some practical use for them, if you need them that is. Next up is a key feature for the G502 and Basilisk, the scroll wheel. Rocket have decided to add their own bit of spice to the wheel. It hasn't got an unlockable feature like the other two mice, this one stays locked, no freedom scrolling for you. And they've given it a name, it's called the 4D Crystal Wheel. Wow. At this point I'm bursting to let loose on this mouse, but I just need to hold it in. In terms of sensor you get a 3370, it's called the Owlei Optical Sensor. It's not the highest tier available at the moment anymore, but it's still a very good and efficient sensor. It's not a huge downgrade, we're talking about minute numbers and some extra features. It isn't anything to really worry about, it will basically do what you need it to do. It will be very energy efficient and the wireless performance will still be fantastic. There's also some fancy RGB going on as well, which is a big selling point for this mouse. It's quite bright, which means that it also doubles up as being able to be used as a flashlight light if the power ever goes out. There's colours on the scroll wheel and on the base of the mouse, they are completely customisable and if you're the type of person who loves their favourite gaming peripheral corporation you can sync it to your other Rocket branded gear. But now I can breathe, I made it. It's time for my opinion. So with all these features, the coating, buttons, performance, RGB, what do I think of this mouse? It's a flaming pile of garbage. Allow me to explain myself. Holding this mouse lures me into a full sense of security because I think it's comfortable because of the shape. However, that's the part where the comfort immediately ends. The lines on the sides are actually pretty distracting, especially on the right side where my fingers tend to move around when playing so they're rubbing up against the lines often. And combined with the coating, which I've experienced with the Cone Pro Air, it also gets quite sticky. Even though it is a soft matte, it seems like it's more on the glossier side. This also means the mouse will get very dirty and with all the grooves and lines it's just going to be a magnet for all the gamer gunk. I don't know why these lines still exist in their mice. On most, if not all Rocket mice, they put something on the side. Here's an idea, just leave it alone. You don't have to cover every part of the mouse with your 
The main mouse buttons are incredibly mushy. I feel like if I took this mouse apart, the switches would actually contain mashed potato. They rub so much against the shell, it's bone chilling at points. The post travel on the buttons, so how much the buttons continue to move after the switch is triggered, is just awful. This means if you're a squeezer, when you click down or a bit heavy handed, you've got no immediate stopping point. Then you've got the rubbing plastic feeling as well, which just gets worse the further you press. For comparison's sake, here's a mouse that has little post travel as an example. The parts that I thought were going to be garbage, being the extra side buttons surprisingly actually have a hint of quality behind them. I'm personally not a fan of them in a practical use kind of sense but they work and they are consistent which is strange considering these are going to be the lesser used part of the mouse. Even the DPI cycle next to the mouse 1 isn't actually so bad, they are a bit more tucked away compared to the G502 so they aren't as easy for me to misclick. As I mentioned before the thumb button or paddle whatever you call it is actually a good idea and I don't mind it at all but it's laughable how the quality of these side buttons surpasses the quality of the main mouse 1 and 2 buttons which is probably related to the continuation of the Titan optical switch, which has been a feature in Rocket Mice for a while now. Each one has had this hint of mushiness to them, however here it is amplified, and after using a higher quality standard of switch over the past year, it just shows how badly the Titan switch actually is and how far it is behind from the competition. Then you get to this 4D scroll wheel, where do I honestly begin? It's a mess, I don't know what it wants from me, I think mine is actually broken. I press down on trigger the mouse 3 switch, but if you apply a bit more pressure, it clicks again and then just stops working. I find the side scrolling sections are really easy to trigger compared to the G502 and the Basilisks. There's like just so much going on with this scroll wheel. For comparison's sake though, there's a lot going on with the Basilisk V3 Pro one as well, but with the Basilisk you're getting features that are actually practical. I love the auto locking scroll wheel. For work purposes this is great, but the point is for this one, there's a lot of features and none of them are good. And when using it in game it has been terrible. I've had a few comments on previous videos saying how I'm not using the right mouse for the correct game. Something like, oh this mouse isn't meant for FPS so you won't like it. So to make it clear, I don't just play Apex or first person shooters. I'll play Dota 2 which is a MOBA, Path of Exile which is an ARPG as well and I use them when testing all mice so every single mouse goes through all of those. And this mouse was terrible for every game. When I used the G502X Plus and a the Basilisk there were some games that I enjoyed using them for a bit especially like more casual games or games that can make use of the unlockable scroll wheel. Obviously when playing Apex and tryharding it was a struggle at points after a few hours but the Cone XP is a struggle for every game. The mushy switches are like sitting next to someone who's chewing with their mouth open. Every time I use this mouse I couldn't wait to stop using it. The other thing is the software and I guess the battery. The battery life is around about 100 hours but my problem is mainly with recharging. Because first the mouse just went dead. It it didn't have any red lights or warning or anything to tell me that it's running low on battery, it just turns off. So I boot up the software, everything was already updated, it's on the latest software and firmware. When I was plugging it in, the software showed it at being at 3% of charge, so I think well that makes sense, that's why it's going dead. But then when the loading is actually finished, it showed 100%, so it was fully charged. Then a few seconds later, it just goes dead. And I kid you not, some of the settings have disappeared. When I set the light timeout, it was set to 15 minutes by default. So I set it to the lowest. When I went to find that section again, it's disappeared. I can't find it anymore. There was a section where you can set how long it takes for the lights to switch off after you've stopped using it. And I cannot find that section. It saved my choice, but I can no longer change it. I went into the change logs and in the updates it said fix cone XP air loosing settings. There are some minor redeeming features, the mouse feet are okay, the wireless performance is good, the shape is comfortable minus the combination of the coating, the RGB cycles through all 16.8 million colours successfully, it even has a hilarious description about their lighting technology called AMO which says it's a state of the art intelligent lighting system that reacts organically to your behaviour without the need for extensive configuration. That's a lot of words for literally no information, I don't know what difference it's made at all. I guess another saving point is that it's got a dock. Now I'm going to demonstrate a fault with the dock here. Watch how I can no longer use the mouse when it needs to be charged as it's sitting on the dock. At this point if I need to use the mouse I have to take it off charge but with this fancy technology called a USB type C cable I can plug it in to the mouse and both charge it and use it at the same time. Magic. 
So this mouse is what I think an out of touch middle management type executive would dream up in an attempt to get little Jaden to influence his parents into buying the coolest looking mouse. And the cost of $150 is a further insult. I think if I'm honest I would pay around $50 max for this mouse and I'd still end up returning it. This mouse is designed to get those that have an RGB fetish or someone that thinks that included accessories are a good value for money to buy it. If it's meant to go up against a new or old G502 or the Razer Basilisk it has certainly failed. I wouldn't even put it up against any mouse. Even the turtle mouse that I own is better than this because it costs $5. If you need to hear a closing statement, don't buy it. It's a steaming pile of hot garbage. If you want a mouse that I actually do recommend, there's a video on screen now.